Welcome to Four Culture, exploring the richness of culture in our community through arts, heritage, preservation, and public art. I'm Vaughn Raymond. I'm a Seattle film teacher, and my students and I have been producing a series of documentaries for the centennial of the Ballard Locks and Lake Washington Ship Canal. One of the most exciting things about this project for me personally has been the opportunity to see amazing things that happen right in the middle of our city that most people don't get to see. For example, while you're sitting in traffic waiting for one of our drawbridges over the canal to open and close, have you ever wondered what's actually going on inside the bridge? Wouldn't it be fun to be inside the bridge while it's opening? Well, one of my students and I got the opportunity to do that recently, and you are about to join us for that experience as we put on hard hats and go inside one of the busiest and most historic drawbridges in the world. <laughs> Cox, crew chief here, Fremont Bridge. We're going to take a tour of the bridge, but there's a lot of places that's going to cause you a headache. So we're going to give you a hat to wear. Excellent. So have you ever been out here on the Fremont Bridge before? No, I haven't. Well, it's pretty exciting. It's about a, it's almost 100 years old. And actually, my grandfather helped build this bridge. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So anyway, there's stuff to see underneath there that's old, some stuff that's new. We'll check out the tower first, and uh, we'll go from there. Let's go. OK. All right, come on up the stairs here. There's one thing about bridges, lots of stairs. It's really cramped in here. Oh, it's very small. There's a steward, this is Mike. And uh, I'm the senior bridge operator here. At one point, we were the most frequently opened bridge in the country. Because it's so low to the water, even relatively smaller sailboats would need an opening. This bridge opened up almost 6,000 times last year. Yeah. You're going to translate that into traffic, yeah. lots of traffic. Yeah. So we try to make the openings balance between the boaters, bicyclists, the pedestrians, the cars. We don't want to cause a traffic jam if we can help it. So in the old days, they used to use levers and foot pedals, and there was no yeah. co computerization on this. So nowadays, the computer stops the bridge, but in the old days, this is the break. So the bridge is coming down. So we crank it on here, crank it back and slow that bridge down. Hope it worked. They, they call it a dead man pedal, mm -hmm. which you, they call it that because if you died all of a sudden, at least the bridge would stop opening. Right? <laughs> yeah. In theory, you fall backwards and your foot comes off the pedal. So, yeah, so when I first yeah. got here, we actually had the old console, and there's, there's two pedals, right? And uh, you controlled it only in manual, which was a lot more fun, in my opinion, because you could crank the motors up and let the wind kind of take the bridge up. It was kind of like where you have to have the feel for it to get it going. Now it's a little bit more uh, user friendly, if you will. When you do the opening sequence, right, uh, we would turn the control power on. This energizes the panel. Uh, the first step, what we would do, we would control the pedestrian gate, so we would stop the pedestrians that don't walk button that turns the pedestrian don't walk signal on. And we control the pedestrian gates, uh, lower them as pedestrians are cleared. Uh, after that, then it's time for the traffic. So we would stop the vehicles with the red traffic signal, and uh, we lower the traffic gates. We lower them to the oncoming gates first, and then the off-going gates to make sure all the cars are clear. Uh, after that, in the center of the bridge, there's a locking mechanism, which uh, is called the center lock. And it you know, basically holds the spans together, so you withdraw that. So then we're ready to open the bridge. Um, you notice how I push it and it doesn't raise the bridge. That's because uh, this bridge uses what's called a relay, relay ladder logic. So you can't move on to the next step unless the previous step is completed. We do have the best view in the city right here. Uh, I have to agree, it's beautiful. We've got the... Uh, Original bell, 1916. There, give it a ring. Just give it a little tug. There you go. All right. So you want to go see how this bridge works 
underneath. Yes, All right, let's go do it. Excuse me. So this bridge is like a teeter-totter, okay? On the teeter-totter, you try to even the weight out, right? Well, there's always a hinge in the middle. There's gotta be something, a hinge there, right? That's what this is in this room here. This is the inside portion, they call it a trunnion. There's ball bearings inside there, and you can kind of see through the little hole here. It goes out to the other side. We're gonna take a look at that other side here in just a moment. Okay. Here's the rest of our hinge right here. That's the outside portion. You can see we're not talking about a little piece of equipment. It's pretty big. And that's what the bridge is actually sitting on. And when that bridge opens, that whole thing moves. Matter of fact, the area you're standing right now disappears. So if it's painted yellow, it moves. So the pit is really deep here because this counterweight that's behind us, when this bridge is open, it actually will end up against the wall down there. This is the counterweight. And again, if we open this bridge up, we would end up lying on our backs down there. And that counterweight helps balance the weight that's forward of our hinge or our trunnion right there. So it makes a nice, it make, doesn't take much horsepower to open up this bridge. We'll take a look at the motors in a little bit here, but the motors, 100 horsepower. That's it. So here's your motor, 100 horsepower. All right. Every car has a transmission. There's your transmission. The difference here is the differential, which is this big green thing over here. This is huge because this has, has all the gears in it that provides the torque to, that makes the bridge open up. So car technology on an industrial scale, literally. Literally, yeah. On your car, you have shock absorbers, right? Well, this is one giant shock absorber right here. So when the bridge gets to a certain point when it's closing, you don't want it to slam shut. The computer will take care of all that for you. But if for some reason there was a glitch, these big shock absorbers are called buffers. They, they will slow the bridge down. These are the original rack bars, and they call it a rack and pinion. Just like you're steering on a car, rack and pinion steering. And there's a pinion gear down here. It's pretty good size. That pinion gear walks along these teeth here, and it drags that bridge open. So this right here, this is the center of the bridge. Remember he was talking about that lock? If you look down here, you can see the lock. Do you want to take a look at it? Okay, so see here, that's the big, that's the gearing that drives everything, locks up, catwalk goes across the water. We can't go across there because we have to be all harnessed in, mm -hmm. go across there. Um, if you're out there and you're harnessed in and like say a fire truck or a bus goes by, that is the craziest ride ever because it's, <laughs> it's bouncing up and down. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it'll. It'd kill a normal man, but not us. <laughs> hey, here we go. Now this counterweight's gonna disappear. See how it's moving? That's impressive. And that sound, that's the buffers releasing the air. Now, like I said, my grandpa helped build this bridge. And keep in mind, this is old school technology. What we have today, got computers to figure it all out. They had a slide rule and their best guess. <laughs> and then, back in the day, they didn't have welding, they had rivets. Hot driven rivets, lots of them. We're still using all the original bolts, all the original threads, still tight after 100 years, still tight. As far as durability, it's been here 100 years. There's no reason why it couldn't be here another 100 years. We just keep maintaining it, because these things are solid. 
It's 100 years old, still strong as can be. So the Cascade Bicycle Club and SDOT got together and put in this bicycle counter. Now, as you can see right here, we're up to 1,230 bikes so far today. That's a lot of bikes, right? For the year, we're almost up to 700,000. Again, that's a lot. So the whole idea is to keep a balance, keep everybody happy, keep the bicyclists happy, keep the pedestrians happy, keep the boaters happy, and the cars happy. Now, how do you do that? Can you get every, make everybody happy? Probably not, but you can do the best you can to make some sort of uh, common ground, some happy medium there. So that's what we're doing here. So anyway, uh, what'd you think of my bridge? Bridge is beautiful. Ah, oh, thank you. Well, it's 100 years old, you know, so uh, we keep plugging away. We're going to hopefully be here for another 100 years. Of course, uh, if I'm still around at that point, I will be the world's oldest man and the world's oldest bridge operator, because I'd still be here. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Take care, Mike. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right.